Right, in question 2, part B, you're given a cantilever canopy, which looks something like this on plan. That's 2 meters, and that's 6 meters. And the slab is fixed along its long edges, and no support around the remaining frayed edges. So the, the, the slab will actually bend in this the direction only, like a cantilever. So if you cut the section here, if you draw your section AA, it looks something exactly like a cantilever. So that's 2 meters, if that is your section AA. So this cantilever or this slab will bend like a cantilever in a hawking. In hawking, or in other words, the tension is at the top. So to find out the number of rebars at the top of the slab, you need to find out. So to find out the uh, uh, the number of rebars at the top, you first of all determine the uh, bending moment at the critical location, which in this particular case is obviously at the fixed end. So this is your point A, the critical location. So just like part, question 2 part A, you have to first of all write down the self weight and also the life low. So to find out the self weight and the life low, make sure you first of all draw the cross section of the scantilever. So the cross section, it's like that. It's simply, let's say this is my section BB. So my section BB is like that. It's 6 meters long and 0.15 meters thick. That's your section BB. So to determine the self weight, you just multiply the sensitive concrete in 25 kN per meter cube times cross-section area which is 6 times 0.15 meters so that will give you the uh, self weight in the unit of kN per meter and then you also find out the life load which it's given in the question sheet 5 kN per meter square and then you multiply by the width of the cross section which in this case is 6 meters so that will give you 30 kN per meter so for to calculate the bending moment A now you know that the self weight is 22.5 kN per meter Live flow is 30. That means on the top of this, you have a total of 30 plus 22 and a half. So that's 52 and a half kilonewton per meter. Of course, this is a UDL acting on the top of the beam. So with that UDL, you can easily find out the bending moment at point A which I just write it down here and that simply equal to 52 and a half times the length 2 times to the low it's acting at the center so it's 1 meter from point A so that will give you 105 kilonewton meter and that's in Hawking so with that you can right away determine the number of rebars at the top of the slab by using the same equation which I'm going to write down here so 105 kilonewton meter changing it to newton millimeter you multiply by 10 to the power 6 and then on the right hand side 
the tensile strength, that's Newton per millimeter square, times the number of bars, times assuming you use T10, so 10 square pi over 4, times the internal lever arm, 75% of the thickness, so that's 150. So from that, you will find out the number of ray bars you need for this cantilever canopy. And that you will find out the number of ray bars running up to the nearest integer. That's 26, number of T10. So these T10s, of course, are arranged along the direction of bending. So the reinforcement is actually arranged like this. And if you draw the cross section, so the reinforcement, if you look at it, okay, so if you cut the cross section here, Okay, you cut it here and look it from at the side. That's the cross section. So the reinforcement is actually placed at the top of the slab. So it's like that. And because this is six meters long about and you have about twenty six diameter twenty six number of T bars, so the spacing between each pairs of reinforcement is about Two hundred and forty millimeters, or in other words, you can write it like this: you have twenty-six number of T ten at the spacing of two hundred and forty millimeters.